feels like they're always looking out for us. Collaborating with the Rural Health Center on their, their rec center, um, working with David Ginsburg and that staff has been a real benefit for us. We can uh, e easily be seen as somewhat of an isolated place out in rural San Luis Valley and having a partner like the Rural Health Center over the last, for me, 10 years and for their history, 20, has been a great way to stay connected with our constituents and our counterparts in, in rural Colorado that are facing pretty much the same problems we're facing. The Rural Health Center has helped us with uh, navigating through the immigration bureaucracy of what it takes to get someone who's from another country uh, into our country and who can work for us. And as a result, we've got a group in our laboratory of about six um, laboratory personnel from the Philippines. And they are just a marvelous group to work with. I guess the other thing I would add is I want to thank the Rural Health Center for being our partner for 20 years. I congratulate them on 20 years and look forward to working with them in the future. When I started out at, at Melissa Memorial Hospital, I started out as a a healthcare worker and actually took over being an administrator in 2000 and I, I knew a little bit about being an administrator but not a whole lot and they were a mentor for me. Today they're like my source of uh, education, they're my source of information. They've been a huge advocate for us and I think they totally understand rural health care which it's a different kind of place that we live in and a different kind of job that we do so the great thing for me is that they totally understand um, the rural part of healthcare. Our IT manager had a death in his family. His daughter, um, that was 10 months old, died very unexpectedly. And so for him to have time out, we had nobody to do our IT for us. So actually the Rural Health Center actually helped us through David Ginsburg, provided us with an IT person uh, off-site of course, but was very helpful for us and w was actually gave uh, Yale time to, to be with his family. We're very proud of them. You know, I just want to say thanks to them for being a friend, for being a mentor, for being there to listen when we're anxious and nervous about the future, uh, for being truly committed to the healthcare system in rural Colorado. They have a passion and they're the best as far as I'm concerned. For us, one of the biggest helps that uh, CRHC has provided is in the area of information technology. And in particular, where we're all challenged to bring forth an, an electronic health record, the committees that they've formed, the resources that they've brought together, the workshops that they've held, have helped us all move these projects forward. The Western Slope, we, uh, we have a great reputation for our peaches. And it seemed like that we would get a visit from Colorado Rural Health just about the time that the peaches came on and we were able then to step up and provide peaches for them to take back uh, to the rest of the organization. The patient really is a beneficiary of the enhanced uh, information that we put together, the workshop information, the quality initiatives, uh, the emergency initiatives, uh, all of which that uh, CRHC does a great job in, in stepping forward on. We certainly wish Luann Wilroy the very best in her next endeavors. Uh, she's been a friend and a, and, and a, uh, a great contact uh, for us through the years. They have been such an important part of our growth. They've been there and partnered with us. Uh, in a fun way. Uh, it's not only a great technical organization, it is a fun organization to deal with. They, they love what they do and somehow in working with them, you love what you do as well. The thing that started Family Health West uh, uh, 65 years ago was a hospital. And they helped us reclaim that uh, experience and that victory. 
I'll never forget, I was at one of their conferences in Longmont, and they talked about uh, Governor Owens at that time had a governor's health care initiative, and he was going to put out grants. And we got a half a million dollars, and we opened up our Cocapelli Clinic long before this hospital was built. We built this as a 16-bed hospital with two surgical suites and no MRI. We're adding the MRI. We're looking at when we might be adding those additional nine beds in a critical access hospital framework. And we're seeing the volumes in our hospital OR continue to grow to the point that at some point we'll be adding that third surgical suite as well. Thanks to Colorado Rural Health and their peer review program and the services that they offer, we review others' charts and others review ours and the community and the consumers are well protected knowing that we're meeting the ultimate standard for peer review. We are rural and we demonstrate that by one of the festivals that we have which has become national is Mike the Headless Chicken. I'll never forget going back and forth with Denise all the time about who she could contact because she just thought Mike the Headless Chicken would be the perfect mascot for Colorado Rural Health. I can tell you my excitement when I heard that there was a band of outlaws in Colorado who wanted to create an office of rural health structured as a not-for-profit I was amazed. When I came to the Rural Health Center 10 years ago, I had um, a great deal of passion and commitment because I believed that every Coloradan, whether rural or urban, deserved access to the highest quality health care services available. I won't say it was easy, but we went from, um, when I came on board, we had $38,412. And it, it wasn't too long until we had our first million and then being able to give that away, again, it, it was priceless. It was an incredible opportunity. And I looked out my office window and I noticed Luann was about eight months pregnant and uh, seeing her struggle in the heat of 95 degrees walking across the, uh, the parking lot and uh, I just have a fond memory of her. And when I walked in the door of the office as CEO, I would look around and see this passion and commitment on the faces of the 30 employees who worked at the Rural Health Center. The Colorado Trust was there at the table before we even had a table. I had met Denise Denton, who was our first um, executive director. She had had my, um, she was my counterpart in Utah when I first met her. And then she went to the Office of Rural Health in Arizona. And I called her up and I said, would you come to Colorado? And so she did. Mm -hmm. And here we are. My earliest memories would be working with Denise Denton and uh, the ability that she had to really establish rapport, not only with foundation, members but also with community members and I think that was really key in the initial stages of developing the Rural Health Center. Rural health care had a voice. I think they finally had an organization that they could look at and say these people are here to help us. And they have really developed their leadership and their competency so that they can better educate, advocate and communicate for rural health issues and I only see that role continuing to advance. It is our rural communities who really are the backbone of this state in terms of providing so much of our food and energy and the spirit of Colorado. It's just important that they continue to be heard and to have their needs met. These communities depend on these small rural facilities. They're, most of them are the economic drivers of the community. So my concern is if we don't have a voice, um, it's very easy for Congress and others to, to just uh, wash us over. Our goal, I think, in 20 years from now is to be able to look at a rural health care uh, system that takes advantage of telemedicine, uh, works on a network approach to making sure that we have sufficient uh, expertise in any of the medical specialties so that no matter where someone lives, they don't all have to drive into Denver to get the uh, specialty attention that they need. The word got out that I had a thing for pie because everywhere I went in the small rural communities, I had to try the local pie, the homemade pie. So, and I like all kinds of pie. So whenever I went into a town, I would figure out where the best pie was, which cafe, which coffee shop. It might even have been the hospital cafeteria because some of those rural hospital cafeterias have amazing home cooked food. In one of the early um, um, annual meetings, uh, I got to experience and play something called cow pie bingo. 
and they selected a beautiful cow to actually perform the deed. When the future farmers, so, so we raised $500, people had a great time. Um, I thought that was terrific. You know what was Kevin awful is it. then the next year the community wanted to do pig, pie, bingo, and then chicken. It got way out of hand. Two years ago in August, I was at a meeting that they sponsored in Pueblo, and they brought a physician down to talk about how he practices medicine. And it was like an eye-opening experience and thinking that's exactly what I've wanted to do, but I didn't know how to do it. They're wonderful people. They're great people to work with. They helped us get our emergency preparedness up and running and ready and functional. We also got a grant three years ago for our electronic medical records to where we were able to purchase that way ahead of the curve. What were your goals with this, with this clinic? And, and <laughs> to stay open. <laughs> we weren't sure when we opened if we were even going to be financially viable to make it a year. Well, one of the things that the Colorado Rural Health Center has done for us twice is helped us find providers, doctors who can come in and serve as our medical director, which is a requirement um, that has allowed us to stay in compliance with Medicare as a rural health clinic. And in spite of the challenges, it's a good life. It's it's good to be here, it's good to make a difference in the lives of people to hopefully improve their health care, improve their lives. Happy 20th anniversary, Colorado Rural Health Center.